Il 6 ottobre nelle sale italiane, grazie a Wonder Pictures, arriva uno dei film più attesi dell'anno, Everything Everywhere All At Once, dei The Daniels, che già ci avevano stupito e coinvolto con il loro pazzissimo Swiss Army Man. Nella sua struttura da pellicola mainstream, Everything Everywhere All At Once è in realtà una lunga riflessione sullo stare al mondo, sull'overthinking, sull'incapacità di vivere il presente perché troppo presi dal rimuginare sul passato e dalle domande nei confronti del futuro. Una pellicola che racconta di esseri umani, di relazioni, di rapporti, ma anche di sofferenza, alienazione e solitudine. Racconta del nostro mondo e lo fa osando, creando le proprie regole, giocando con le immagini e con la fantasia. Un film che fa esplodere letteralmente la testa, ma che ha anche una grande capacità di emozionare e di commuovere. Di tutto questo e di altro ne abbiamo parlato proprio con i registi, i The Daniels. Il film parla di provare, del provare a esistere, a vivere all'interno del caos della vita moderna. Insomma, io pago e non credo di essere la sola una psicologa ogni settimana per questa ragione. Quindi come avete fatto a tradurre tutto questo all'interno di un solo film? It's a very good question. It was very hard. It, take, it takes a long time and uh, a lot of really bad drafts. You know, the first mm-hmm. three or four drafts of this movie were a mess. Because we kind of knew no matter what we made it was going to be a mess it was just a, a matter the only question was whether it was going to be a good mess or a bad mess you know yeah. um, so we ended up luckily with a mess that we're very proud of but i think a lot of it comes down to um being able to um anchor it on something you know mm-hmm. there there's uh, there's this wonderful uh painter um and now I'm uh, totally blanking on his name. He's a Japanese painter uh, who does very maxless, messy um, drawings. This, this guy, oh, yeah. I can't remember his oh, name. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and he, his, there's so much detail, there's too much going on, um, but in the end, it's always one shape. So usually mm-hmm. it's like, like a one wave or one tree or one what, whatever it is. And I remember early on, we were realizing we had to come up with what, what the shape was. In the mess, what was the shape always going to be? Mm-hmm. And it ended up being the family. You know, it, it's just about the this, these three or four people. Um, if we can make the mess always point to them, then I think we were going to make an okay movie because then, then at least you were going to have something that emotionally resonated. And so that was kind mm-hmm. of, that was, you know, one short short answer for a very hard question <laughs> the other answer is uh convince michelle yo to star in your movie yeah and then, yeah. and then she'll ground it all and the audience yeah. will love her and and then they'll they'll go on the ride you know yeah Una delle cose che più ho amato del film è il finale. Generalmente nei film più recenti, soprattutto blockbuster e cinecomic, il tutto finisce con una super battaglia epica con effetti speciali e con una persona che deve distruggere l'altra. All'interno del vostro finale invece no. Sì, c'è una battaglia epica, ma è una battaglia emotiva. Il tutto finisce con una riconciliazione. Il che non è una cosa scontata, anzi io credo che sia un finale molto interessante. Come l'avete pensato? Come è nato? questo finale yeah, I think um, it was always our goal to have a finale that that did both you know that we, mm-hmm. we get to do the Marvel ending there are a lot of visual effects there And is a big fight, fight scene, scene yeah but can we do that at the same time as the family is reconciling and can the can the battle be about mm-hmm. something other than like you said uh, blowing up the other guy? Um, and I think v- early on when we were just outlining the movie, we, we came up with that idea and that goal that like, that the ending was going to be huge and small at the same time. And, and that we would use the fight scene as like a way to, uh, express kind of the metaphor mm-hmm. of what's happening inside of, you know, two people as they have an argument. Um, but then also like er- early on, we, we, we loved the idea of creating an action sequence that was all about kindness and all about using, uh, basically the multiverse can be used to destroy you or it can be used to understand you. And that, that was yeah. kind of what we were 
it was like, oh, well, let's use the multiverse to fully understand someone and see what that looks like within the idea, the context of an action scene. Um, and that that got us excited because we love weird challenges like that as filmmakers. And, and we're really proud of that sequence. That whole finale is like very strange, like you said. It's very interesting. Um, and um, we, we, we weren't sure if it was going to work, you know, because mm -hmm. we, 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 it could be really corny or cheesy, you know, if, if, if we didn't if we didn't get it right. And I think a big reason it does work is after all that craziness, it's just mm -hmm. Stephanie and Michelle in the parking lot. Yeah. And, and, and the whole movie could have fall, fallen apart if that scene didn't work, um, which was scary, but like they did such beautiful work. And, it, and I think it's, it's like, it ended up being such a gift to the audience to be like, now it's just, two people <laughs> yeah you don't have to you know um keep up with 20 plot lines at the very mm -hmm. very end you know se poteste scegliere quale sarebbe la vostra versione all'interno di un universo alternativo i have an answer i've given before but i'm trying to think like how do i feel today you know today, yeah yeah um, some days i just want um to uh be a school teacher uh with like eight children that live on like a commune not in the city uh i'm so happy that I, my, i made a movie and it's successful but like if i could just jump to that universe every once in a while mm -hmm. just have like giant family dinners and and then like teach kids math i i would love it <laughs> <laughs> I want to jump to a universe where I can just uh, lie, lie down and do nothing for a while. That's that's mm -hmm. mostly where I'm at right now. Right, we're the opposite. Yeah, he yeah. has a kid and it's exhausting. Yeah, I have yeah. a kid. So I'm like, I just want to lie down and do nothing. I want to <laughs> I want to read a lot of books. That's why I, mm. I wish I could be doing that right now. <laughs> we should switch lives for a minute. <laughs>